Let's say you actually require a higher voltage, um, or I should say wattage going through your circuit, um, is really what it boils down to is you have to put a resistor in series with these. Now, uh, there's a lot of information on resistors in the troubleshooting section, um, but really what it boils down to, you just need something that's going to slow down or provide a little bit more resistance. Um, I had, uh, you know, one, one thought is that you can just use more nichrome wire, you know, just have some nichrome wire hanging off over here, but that's awfully dangerous. Um, you know, one of the things that I found through um, a local hobby shop was just this galvanized steel wire. Uh, I think they use it for um, floral arrangements and that kind of stuff, um, but this comes at a 28 gauge and you can buy it in 100 foot rolls. I think it was like $3 or something like that. It's not very much. Um, so the first thing that you have to do when you have these wires is uh, measure out a foot, okay? Because um, that's going to get your ohms per foot to figure out how much of this wire you need to provide an adequate resistance to your circuit. Now, in most circumstances, okay, you don't need to add much more than, say, 3 to 4 ohms. Okay, so it just so happens that this wire, it's 0.3 ohms per foot. So even though it's 28 gauge, I mean, it was the smallest I could find at the hardware store. So in order to get 3 ohms, we're talking 10 feet. Okay, now if you want to sit here and measure out 10 feet, you can do that. Uh, but I, I do have a little trick. Many of you who live in the country, you might know what this guy is. Um, it's just a uh, porcelain insulator um, that a lot of times you can use on electrical fences, um, but it doesn't really matter. You just need something circular. Um, you know, you can even use the arm on this guy if you want. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, what you do is, is you, if you have um, something circular like that, is once you figure out the circumference, then all you have to do is just make a whole bunch of wraps. Um, you know, as it stands, this guy, I believe, um, you know, it was about uh, an inch and a quarter in diameter, okay? Now, for those of you who may remember from algebra or geometry or what have you, um, is the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, um, you know, which is pretty much diameter times pi, but, um, you know, so if you're looking, you know, all right, let's just figure that out right now, all right. So, you know, we're talking about four inches uh, to circle this thing once, okay? So if you need, you know, 10 feet, well, 10 feet is 120 inches uh, divided by 4 is 30. So all you gotta do is just grab your wire and just make, you know, 30 count. Do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you know, all the way up to 30, uh, and then you have your 10 feet. And what you get is, is I don't know if you guys can see it, I'll zoom in on it in a second. Um, is you just get this wire, kind of looks like a slinky, um, and what I did is I actually put uh, two of, you know, a male and a female of the snap-on um, uh, snap connectors, the bullet connectors. Uh, that way what I can do is, is because I know that this is probably, uh, you know, three ohms, once again you can use your multimeter uh, to test this, you know, um, is you just put it in series. All right. It doesn't matter what side you put it on. Um, you know, I'm just going to grab the hot side and uh, you know connect these two. You know, trying to take care that they don't really get tangled, um, and you don't want this to touch, okay? Because uh, you're going to lose all your length in that wire. Oh yeah, the one thing that I had to do, um, you know, is because, you know, a lot of these snap-on connectors are rated, you know, at, uh, you know, 18 gauge or 16 gauge um, wire, that kind of stuff, is it won't hold on to this resistor wire that well. So just fold it on the end, just fold it a couple of times and you should be able to crimp it, um, you know, just to give yourself a little bit of meat when you put it in there to kind of pinch down onto. Um, but that should be it for that. You know, and this is, like I said, this is the absolute, absolute cheapest resistor you can buy. Um, there are better ones out there um, that you can buy, and, you know, you can look in the troubleshooting section. It kind of shows you, 
Um, if you do want to actually purchase a resistor, it shows you uh, kind of how to, how to figure out um, you know, what you need here. But I think these are the most versatile. Um, I think they're probably the easiest to use. Um, but the, the thing that you want to keep in mind is, is that um, you can't keep them wire round, okay? Um, you know, where, let's say, I'm trying to do it right now for you, um, is if you just have these all connected together, okay, is what will happen is the electricity is going to take the shortest path. So it actually it has to dangle like that. Now, one of the ways that you can keep it um, from, you know, if you don't want that big thing dangling like that, is just find some wire that's actually coated. Um, I do know that they have some, but most of the coated stuff that I found, unfortunately, was like 18 gauge, 19 gauge. I think that's going to be too big of a diameter for you. I don't think you're going to get much resistance at all. Um, but it never hurts to try, you know, do whatever you'd like. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, if you still have your power supplies clipping out, um, just put more length into your resistor and increase the ohmage of your uh, uh, whole, whole, res um, whole circuit as itself. Um, and you should get it to work, work pretty well. Um, I don't see why you'll have much issue one way or another.